You know what time it is. It's time for Go To Kitchen's Lunch with Leslie. Hey everybody, I'm gonna turn my camera around. Scott, hi. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Um, I'm so happy that you are here with me and that you, hey, hi Christine. I'm finally getting over calling you Dr. Christine all the time and actually just calling you Christine since we're buddies. <laughs> I, yesterday though, I was with some people that know you actually and we said Dr. Christine like all day. So it was Dana and I was with another girl anyway. So anyway, uh, so today we are going to talk about, I always say, you know, people talk about superfoods a lot and I always say all superfoods need to move over because there is one true superfood in the world and that is the cabbage. <laughs> Look how beautiful this is. I bought this at a farmer's market yesterday. You can hear Edison barking in the backyard. I bought the big giant green one and I bought the big giant purple one. And I will tell you by the end of the week it will be all gone. So as a cancer survivor it's super important. Uh, by the way, I guess I should introduce myself. Uh, I know they're gorgeous aren't they? Um, I can't wait to find out what they turn into this week. Um, my name is Leslie. I have a website called GoToKitchens.com. Um, I talk about health and wellness on there, but primarily it's a cooking site. So know that if you go to my website and you cook anything from there, you are cooking something that is good for your body and that there is a reason almost behind every ingredient um, that I use to cook with. So if you are interested in learning more about health and wellness and getting great recipes that are super flavorful because I am not into bland, boring food, I am into flavorful, wonderful food. And hey, welcome. Um, and so my recipes are full of that sort of thing and I shot two episodes yesterday and I have to tell you I made a frittata yesterday that is going to blow you away. It is so easy. I was with Emily and you might have seen our scope when we were filming the smoothie and we made this amazing frittata. Holy cow. Hi Ellen. Yeah, I remember your name. How are you today? Um, thanks for joining me. Ellen, you're becoming one of my regulars. I love it. So, um, so anyway, so, but we made this amazing recipe. So if you are, if you are into wanting to find better ways to be healthy, it is not beat you over the head healthy. Um, it is just really great recipes, super flavorful that your whole family is going to love because I live with a p very picky eater. And, um, and so it is, it is super um, it is, it's hard to cook for him to find him something that he really likes to eat. So I have to get really creative. So I have all kinds of information on there. So some of you I've never seen on here before. Thank you so much. Happy Labor Day. Um, I hope that you're having an amazing day. Um, hey, welcome, welcome. So I hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to do my lunch with Leslie and then we're going to go out and buy Robin a new pair of tennis shoes. So <laughs> he needs a new pair of running shoes. I bought mine last week and he's going to get his this week. So today we're going to talk about the cabbage. In fact, all week we're going to talk about pretty much the cabbage, but we're going to talk about uh, fermented foods in general. And um, we're going to talk about sauerkraut. We're going to talk about kombucha. We're going to talk about kefir. We're going to talk about some subjects that, um, again, it's, it's, I'm not going to go into the scientific things about it, but I am going to go into the uh, why you should eat these types of things. So why they should be included in your diet almost every day. So yeah. So, um, so cabbage to me, in my personal opinion, is a superfood deluxe. Um, about the tennis shoes. Yeah, no, we both need new running tennis shoes. So, um, yeah, not in this scope. I can talk about it in another scope. I don't want to get way off topic, but, um, but yeah, we can talk about that in another scope. And I bet Dr. Christine has, see, I did it again. I bet Christine has some, um, some some ideas about balancing uh, the pH in your body. So I do believe it's important that you do that. And as a cancer survivor, it's something that I strive for all the time. So um, so there's a different varieties of cabbage. So I want to talk about the types of cabbage. I want to talk about the nutrients in cabbage, and I want to tell you a little bit about the history of cabbage, which I think might 
uh, surprise you. And then the rest of the week we're going to have some cabbage recipes and then I'm going to end the whole week on, I'm going to actually grill cabbage this weekend or this Friday on For Real Food Friday. I'm going to take you outside my backyard and we're going to grill some ca cabbage. So... <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to grill some cabbage, and uh, I have this amazing recipe that I can't wait to share for you. And at the same time, I'm going to be filming it for Go To Kitchens, so it should be an interesting For Real Food Friday. <laughs> so, And I might have another, a few recipes for you this week, just because I want you to learn to love cabbage uh, as much as, uh, as I do and as much as everybody should. So, um, So thank you very much for saying so. Um, so here's the different types of cabbage. There's red cabbage like this. This is just a plain red cabbage. There are not enough purple foods in the world in my opinion. So <laughs> so anytime I can get a purple food, I'm super excited about it. So if you are eating a lot of red cabbage, you are getting a lot of vitamin C. Um, cabbage in general, even green cabbage has a lot of vitamin C in it, but red cabbage is power punched with vitamin C. So what does vitamin C do in our body? Always organic. Yes, I, you've never been with me before, so yes, let's talk about this. I, good point. Uh, <laughs> I always buy organic fruits and vegetables. My rule of thumb is, actually my rule of thumb is, is if it, I can't buy it organic, I don't eat it. I don't buy it. So I change my recipes for the week. Thanks for all the hearts. They're beautiful today. Um, so I, I don't even buy it. For That's just for my household. But um, you can also use the principle of if you're going to eat the flesh or the outside, then you want to buy organic. If you're going to eat the, if you're not going to eat the pe the peel, or if it's like a banana or an orange or something like that, then you can buy non-organic. But for me and my house, we eat organic as much as possible. So yeah, and if it's if it's not available, then we don't get it. I bought these at a farmer's market yesterday. Isn't it gorgeous? It is just absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to cut into it. I'm gonna do that for you probably tomorrow, cut into these two cabbages, so. Um, but yeah, this gorgeous cabbage, purple cabbage. Um, the one thing, the one negative about purple cabbage is it's unlike its green cabbage counterpart when you cook it. I know it's so pretty. I took its picture like three times yesterday, <laughs> which is crazy. I'm like, cabbage, ooh, cabbage pictures. Um, but it, 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 Purple cabbage can be, I know, right? I'm like, oh, I love my cabbage. I don't want to eat it. It's so beautiful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so purple or red cabbage, I actually prefer it too. My husband isn't a huge fan, but, um, but when you cook it, it can actually get a little tough. And so one rule with cabbage is that you don't want to ever overcook it. If you get it to a point where it's limp and it's not crunchy, you have depleted all of the vitamins out of the cabbage and you're not doing yourself any good. You just have an ingredient at that point. I mean, you're getting some nutrients, but you're not getting the superfood nutrients that you'd be getting if you eat it raw or that you just gently cook it. A cabbage should not be in a pot or on a grill for longer than like three to four minutes and then it should be out and it should when you eat it it should be crunchy purple cabbage sometimes if you soak it like in a salt water or something it will actually loosen it up a little bit it'll loosen its um, molecules up a little bit and makes it a little bit easier to cook so it's not quite so tough I like purple cabbage just raw I like purple cabbage salad I like cabbage purple cabbage in my um, in my kraut. I mean, so for me, it's just whenever, if I have a purple cabbage around, it's, I'm just going to eat it because it's that, I just love it that much. But yes, cabbage for sure, always organic. And, and, in Fort Collins, it's cabbage season right now because we're coming into winter and um, cabbages have been notorious for winter foods because they store so like in a dry cellar, like in the Middle Ages, <laughs> um, in dry cellars, they were actually uh, beautifully, Edison likes cabbage too. That's Edison, my labradoodle. He's 12 years old and still acts like he's a puppy. So, um, and I'm 45 and still act like I'm a puppy. But <laughs> anyway, so I digress. I'm sorry. Um, so yes, so uh, purple cabbage packed full. It's your super nutrients in this particular cabbage, especially with the vitamin C. Okay, so there's purple cabbage. The next would be green cabbage. <laughs> 
He said, <laughs> right? <laughs> don't talk don't talk about what he eats. He actually eats all organic as well. That's why he's 12 and acts like a puppy because I have been feeding him all organic since he was 6 weeks old and he's an amazing amazing dog. So, he, I'm serious. He acts like he's a little tiny puppy. So, he's a good boy. Um so, here's my green cabbage. It's giant. It is gorgeous. It is so beautiful. Again, I don't want to cut into it. I took pictures of this one too, but anyway, cabbage porn, I guess, but um, I do not give my dog bones. No, he gets, he gets no, nothing like that. So nope, he has an organic dog food that he eats that I know where it's made and what's in it. So, um, <laughs> green cabbage to me has one of the, and it, and it, and it is one of the most appealing fate flavors to, yeah, back to the cabbage. That's right. Uh, it is one of the most appealing, uh, flavors. <laughs> Oh my God, if that becomes a real hashtag, I'm going to love it. <laughs> cabbage porn, hashtag cabbage porn. I'm totally using it. That's it. Tomorrow, that's what the tag will be. Look for that tag, cabbage porn. If they don't, they might not let me do that. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yes, so green cabbage is the most appealing for most people. So if you have a picky eater, green cabbage is probably going to be the way to go to get them introduced into the cabbage world because... It is, it is not as stout as a red cabbage for sure. It rolled away, by the way. Um, it is not as stout in flavor as, and it's, and it's a little bit softer when you cook it. So, I, did you do a cabbage diet? I know some people that have done cabbage diets. So, <clears throat> you have to be careful though. Make sure you're getting all your protein in. Um, so, this is a green cabbage. This is t primarily what you're seeing in, um, in the. In the grocery store nowadays again this came from a farmers market so um, this actually has if you're making kraut I actually recommend that you use a green cabbage I just made some kraut I'll show you hold on oh no wrong wrong jar. Hold on. getting my kraut this is actually a cur curatito um, I recommend that you use green cabbage. The reason is, is when you ferment, and I don't know the scientific reasons behind this, but I have read many, many places that when you ferment green cabbage, it actually releases more indoles, which is a cancer fighting property, um, and then purple cabbage will. So just this, again, I'm not saying sauerkraut is cabbage. Yes, it is for sure. Um, yeah, and it's one of the best ways to eat it. It's one of the healthiest ways to eat it because you're this is a power punch little thing right here. So, yes, so if you're gonna make sauerkraut, then I recommend that you use a green cabbage for that because of the cancer fighting anti cancer properties for it. The other types, the other few types of cabbage is um, it's good on anything. I can just eat it right out of here. This is so good right here. I just eat it right out of there. So, yes, it is fabulous. So, um, the other types of cabbage would be uh, bok choy. That, that's actually a, a form of cabbage. It's mostly popular in Asian cultures. Um, I'm actually going to talk about fermenting this week. So catch my scopes. I do it every every day, every weekday at noon. Uh, we will actually talk about fermenting this week and how to ferment cabbage. So. You can use purple. You can use purple or red. It just doesn't have the same cancer fighting properties as it does when it's green like this. So, and that's just something that I've read. I don't know the scientific reasons behind that, but it's that what I've read is that it releases a certain property in the cabbage that makes it even more of a cancer buster. So, or an anti-cancer type food. So even if you don't have cancer, you can help prevent ever getting it if you're eating for things like that. Um, yes, thank you for the recap. So, um, bok choy is a type of cabbage. It's really popular in, uh, in Asian countries and, of course, in American cooking nowadays. It's really making its way into salads and stuff. Super, super good for you. And then there's the Napa cabbage, which I tried to find one and I couldn't find one. But it's, the, it's a green cabbage that is oblong. It, looks like a, it almost looks like a football, except not as tapered on the ends. Um, but it's an oblong cabbage, and it has a very mild flavor. And bok choy... 
actually has a little bit more calcium than other cabbages does. Um, and it's and bok choy is one of my favorite things to add to broth. If I'm going to make bone broth, I really like to put the bok choy into my bone broth. It really releases an amazing flavor. Now, because you're cooking for a long period of time, you don't get the same benefits, but it's really, really good for flavor. So I recommend using bok choy for if you're making homemade bone broth. Um, so, and then the Napa cabbage, very mild, and the Napa cabbage has, it's, uh, it has an unusual property, which is high in beta carotene, which is also a cancer fighter, um, but it's high in beta carotene, and again, it's kind of an oval shape, and it kind of looks like a, like a fat football without the tapered ends, and if you see a Napa cabbage, I will tell you that is super great for steaming. I really like Napa cabbage steamed, just lightly steamed as a side dish. Little garlic, maybe just a touch of ghee or butter. Amazing. So, um, okay. So here's the nutrient properties of cabbage. These are going to blow you away, right? <laughs> one cup of either purple or green cabbage or any of the cabbages that I've mentioned, one, one cup has 66% of your daily recommended allowance of vitamin K. Now then, here's the importance of that. A lot of the medicines that people, if you take a lot of, uh, there's certain medicines actually in the world today, and I'm just, I'm not gonna go into every single one of them, that actually deplete your body of vitamin K. And, it, and that affects your immune system. So cabbage helps replenish that and helps your body establish a really good vitamin K balance. If you don't take any medicines and you just need some vitamin K, um, then cabbage is a great source of that. K, the letter K as in Kit Kat because that's the only thing I can, as in Kimberly, there, yes, thank you, vitamin K. 66% of your daily recommended allowance in one tiny cup of cabbage. That is tremendous, that is tremendous value. In green or purple cabbage, you're getting 43% of your daily recommended allowance of vitamin C. Now in red cabbage, I think it's a cup and a half is actually 100% of your daily allowance of vitamin C. That cooked, when you cook a cabbage, that is not very much cabbage, okay? If you're eating it raw, that's about a salad size. You can get all your vitamin C. You don't need to take a supplement. You can eat this and get all the vitamin C that you need, not this whole thing. If you eat this whole thing, you're probably gonna feel sick at your stomach, so don't do that. <laughs> a cup and a half of this gives you all of your daily recommended allowance for vitamin C. Huge, huge, huge. They are discovering more and more that vitamin C not only fights cancer, but it prevents cancer, all kinds of cancer, colon cancer, uh, lung cancer, um, breast cancer, thyroid cancer. Vitamin C is power packed, knock it down, knock it back. Because you all know, well maybe you don't know, so I shouldn't assume that, but you, all of us have cancer in our body all the time. We all have cancer. It's whether it, it's the indicators are switched on and off in your body. So when an indicator is switched on, in my case, in my breast, an indicator switched on and it says, oh, <laughs> we're not gonna die off like our, my cells were saying, we're not gonna die off like we're supposed to, so we're gonna create a tumor and it's gonna be in your boob. And my immune system was not healthy enough to combat that. When you power pack your body, uh, it is super important. Uh, and two years ago, I got hit in the face with cancer and I thought, something's got to change because my body produces cancer for some reason. So something has to change. And so my diet was my first course of action. Uh, and I made huge changes and it kind of stressed me out. But now it's like second nature and I just don't even think about it. This is just how I eat. This is how I do it. And now I'm trying to spread that message onto other people. So... Uh, but yes, we all have cancer in our body all the time. Now, don't go around worrying about the cancer cells that are in your body because if you have a strong immune system, and sometimes not even if you do or don't, um, your body is able to fight those cancer cells back and leave those indicators off, okay? So that's a very layman's way of explaining what happens in our bodies <laughs> when cancer is turned on, essentially. So uh, <laughs> thank you. You're sweet. I love your style too. Um, so that's what happens with when, when, it's, when it's actually turned on or off. So these two vitamins, K and C, can actually prevent your body from turning those indicators on. And more and more studies are being done. They're doing studies on rats, which I hate, but they are. I hate that they're giving 
cancer to rats, but they are. Um, and they're doing, and they're starting human trials. And it's been a practice in Mexico for, in other countries for many, many years, fighting all types of cancer, prostate, breast. Um, I could go on and on a whole list of cancers, mostly tumor-based cancers, um, with things like vitamin C, vitamin K. So eat your cabbage. Um, the other thing is, is that, oh my gosh, I've totally forgot how to say it already. I listened to it today so I wouldn't forget. It's called sulforain. Did I say that right? Antibiotics destroys everything. <laughs> That's what they are. It's anti-life. <laughs> so it means anti-life, which means you're killing everything. So... That's sad, human guinea pigs. Well, but no, these are people that actually, sulforain, did I say it right? Sulforain, I think I did. <laughs> I listened to it today, I was like, how do you say that? Sulforain. Um, yeah, but they are doing those types of studies, but these people already have cancer, and so they are, they're not injecting them with cancer, but they are, uh, but they're doing studies to see how they work. We're, we're that far along uh, in the vitamin C studies in the world, so, and I keep up with all the types of cancer research that's going on right now, because I'm so interested in it, but. Um, so the sulforanes, mostly in raw cabbage, you kind of cook out, if you cook cabbage too long, you're definitely going to cook out sulforane. What is, what does a sulforane do, right? What the, what the world is that? What it, what is that anyway? <laughs> a sulforane actually helps reduce inflammation in your body. Cancer loves inflammation. It loves, it loves when you have an inflamed body, which means that you have a sick body. Um, and a lot of people are walking, are walking around with inflamed bodies and they may be, you know, they may be Bobby bodybuilder and, you know, look amazing and look great and whatever, but their body is inflamed because of the types of foods that they're putting and the wrong nutrition that they're putting in their body. And you hear about, you know, you think people, they look healthy, but they got cancer. What happened there? That's what happened to me. I was like the healthiest people that everybody knew or the healthiest person that everybody knew. And then I had cancer. It was like, what the, what happened to that? You know, why did she get cancer? And I don't have cancer and whatever. So, but it's because my body was so inflamed because of the types of foods that I was putting in there. So cabbage is anti-inflammatory because of the sulfur rains. I'm looking down at my notes. So excuse me. The other thing is, is that it helps uh, fight unhealthy bacteria in your gut. Now that happens in the raw process, then you pump it up in the fermented process. <laughs> I mean, you super pump it up when you do this because there are, there are little micro uh, bacteria in sauerkraut that actually fight the bad bacteria in your stomach and replenish it with good bacteria. So that may not be the exact process, but that's basically, again, in very layman's terms of what's happening. Bad bacteria gone, good bacteria in. And so cabbage is super good for that. Um, what else does sulforane do? Um, it helps protect, oh, this is one of my favorite things. <laughs> so you walk outside. So let's say that you eat an amazing diet every single day. I mean, you eat as clean as you could possibly eat. All your foods are organic. Thank you so much. I appreciate you following me. I really do. Thank you. I just, it makes my day when somebody <laughs> follows me. So, um, but as, I mean, so you could be eating clean, clean, clean. I eat super clean. I mean, clean. I eat a lot of different foods um, and I'm not a vegetarian, but I eat clean. I know where all my food came from and I'm super, super passionate about that. <laughs> You're so funny, Evan. <laughs> Hi, Evan, by the way. Happy Labor Day. Um, so, but as soon as I walk outside, I am exposed to all kinds of toxins. I mean, I, it's almost toxin overload just right there. So you're exposed to all kinds of toxins. So those are environmental toxins that you cannot control. Your lungs are breathing them in. You're taking them into your system. You cannot control that. Sometimes the water you drink has toxins in it. Um, let's say you're caught out and you need to eat something that has toxins in it, right? So you have toxins, whether you know it or you want to believe it or not. I don't like to think about it, but I know that there are toxins in my body, so my body needs to filter those out. Hi, yeah, welcome. Nice to meet you. St. Louis in the house. Um, so your body is full of toxins, <laughs> whether you like to think so or not, because you're bombarded by them every single day. Guess what comes through and does a clean sweep? Cabbage. <laughs> Cabbage helps eliminate toxins out of your body. 
So it's an amazing, it's amazing properties for that. So that was my whole toxin rant, by the way. Um, and then, of course, because I've been talking about it a lot, uh, sulforanes actually do aid in not only preventing cancer, but actually healing cancer. So uh, cabbage, again, super, super amazing food. Um, so when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, this has been two and a half years ago. If you're new to me, you probably don't know this. Um, but I was diagnosed with breast cancer. You know, I'm not a big fan of the diet. If you watch my scope, I don't know if it was last week or the week before I talked all about diets. I'm not a big fan of any like one diet, like paleo and gluten-free. Actually, gluten-free, some people just need to be gluten-free. But all of those types of things, um, cabbage diets. Uh, what's the other one? I want to say uh, grapefruit diet. Uh, that, yes, you know why you lose weight? Because you're not eating as much, because you're not putting as much into your pie hole every single day. That's why you're losing weight. It has nothing to do with the cabbage. It has to do with the restrictions that you are doing to your body. So cabbage, yes, it's great for you. A cabbage diet, probably not, because you're not getting enough proteins. Uh, you're probably not getting all of your vitamins. You're probably not getting all of your minerals. So I am against I'll just come out and say it. I'm against those kinds of things. I think that they're dangerous. I think that they throw your chemical balance off, and I do not suggest them. However, I know that they're really popular, and if you want to lose some weight quick, then maybe that's the way to go. But, uh, yeah, well, actually, I understand vegan. <laughs> I get vegan and vegetarian, actually. I'm, I'm pretty much a vegetarian. I, eat, I do eat some meats, but I eat mostly vegetables. And, but I do understand vegan because it usually it's a, vegan is a conviction. <laughs> it is not a diet. It is a conviction. And you are convicted by what they do to animals so that you can consume them or so you can wear the shoes or so that you can wear, put the leather seats in your car. I mean, so... I understand the convictions of a vegan, actually, but um, the other diets, not so much. So plant-based, I get for sure, but anyway. Um, but not for like weight loss purposes, but for lifestyle choices, basically. Um, so back to my cancer story. So I was a cancer, I'm a cancer survivor, two and a half years. I'm doing great. I have scans regularly. I am super clean, no cancer, no nothing, no, not even a hint, nothing. I'm doing so well. I'm doing so much better now than I did before I had cancer. It's like an amazing story. So that's a whole nother scope. But when I was diagnosed with it and I went to my naturopath, I hired a naturopath right away. I used medical and natural medicine to combine for my treatment. So just so you know that, I don't like for people to go, oh, she went all homeopathic and, you know, and didn't uh, and doesn't have cancer. That's not true, actually. I had the cancer removed. I did radiation. But I also used homeopathic um, and natural foods to heal my body from what was happening to me and to, and to ensure that I never had cancer again. Because once you ever have it, you don't ever want it again. So, because it scares the pants off of you. <laughs> it's terrifying. So, but, so my naturopath said, um, let's look at, we need to look at your estrogen balance because obviously it's breast cancer. It's probably estrogen driven. And let's find out what happened there. So we did that. Long story short, we did that. I was... I had perfect estrogen levels, especially for my age. At the time, I was 42 years old. Uh, I had perfect estrogen levels, but I wasn't metabolizing it through my body properly. So that sent off a signal to him that he needed to help me find more ways to get indoles into my uh, into my system. Indoles are indol three uh, carbonoids, which are um, anyway, I don't want to get too scientific on you here. The acronym is for it is I3C. <laughs> you're funny. You're anti-everything, Evan. <laughs> Can't believe you're not anti-food. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry. I know Evan, so I can give him a little bit of grief. So anyway, so um, so he said, you need to do, and I was like, well, how, what, are, what are those and how do I get more of them? And he said, you need to eat more cruciferous vegetables. Now, what's that? Well, that sounds crazy. What it, Do I have to like go buy special vegetables? And he's like, no, Leslie. He always looked at me like I was a crazy person. No, honey, you don't have to go buy special vegetables. That is broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, you know where those are? Do you know where you can get some of those? I was like, oh yeah, I know where those are. So we started ramping up all of those types of vegetables, cruciferous vegetables to the max. 
cabbage has one of the highest levels of indole threes that you can find. And so I started eating a lot of cabbage and I had to be really creative about ways to find it. So I was tested again to see what my, if my body, this was like, you know, eight months after the whole ordeal of testing and everything, was tested again to see how my body was metabolizing estrogen and bingo bongo, I was spot on. Estrogen levels, perfect. Metabolization of or metabolization, met metabolizing estrogen through my body beautifully. And so I was like, holy cow, it totally worked. And he's like, yeah. So super simple. I just put a bunch of cruciferous vegetables into my diet and bingo, estrogen on, you know, and metabolizing perfectly and beautifully. And breast cancer gone, it's goodbye, never to come back again. So there you go. Cabbage. If you want to know, is it a miracle? It very well could be in a little leafy package just like this. Um, so the, the, the benefits of indole threes are it promotes a healthy hormone balance um, in men and women. You men, yeah, <laughs> a lot of men hear the word estrogen and automatically turn off and say, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> they automatically turn off and say, well, I don't need, uh, <laughs> that's right, he doesn't want it. He wants to bark. That's all he wants to do. Um, I don't need estrogen. Well, no, you need estrogen. You have to have a, a balance just like women do. And you can go through the same types of symptoms that women can if your estrogen is not balanced. So we talk about estrogen. That is not just a chick thing. That is a people thing. We talk about testosterone. That is not a dude thing. That is a people thing. We uh, Both sexes have estrogen and testosterone in our bodies. So, and they need to be at good levels. Um, and I won't go into the, the reasons and the symptoms of, that you might have if you're experiencing low or high of any of those, but yes. Um, so that's what it does. It actually uh, prevents cellular damage. Bingo bongo, that's right. Uh, it actually prevents uh, cellular damage in your body. Of course, cancer is nothing but cellular damage. And then uh, it boosts your immune system. And cancer preys on, a, on an immune system that is not strong. So here it is, anti-cancer in the size of a small bowling ball right here, our, our regular bowling ball right here. Cabbage, you should be eating cabbage in some format at least three to five times a week. I eat it almost every single day. Cabbage and spinach are the two things that I eat almost every single day, mostly in the fermented versions. So, I mean for the cabbage anyway. No, I don't grow my own. I have a tiny little backyard. Well, you saw my backyard the other day. There's nowhere to grow vegetables. <laughs> I wish there was. And I don't have a green thumb. I can hardly keep anything alive. So growing food would be like, I'd starve to death if, I, if that's what I had to rely on. So I have some friends that, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. You might have to catch the replay. She said my audio keeps cutting out. Um... Okay, so here's some fun facts about cabbage. We've talked about all the reasons you need to eat it. So here's some fun facts that I bet you didn't know about cabbage because they kind of shocked me. Robin wasn't shocked at all because he reads a lot of history, but I had no idea. One of them is that mo almost every state in the United States and a lot of countries even, their individual states, uh, and almost every large city uh, produces its own cabbage. Cabbage is super easy to grow, so they grow it all over the United States. So when you're eating cabbage, chances of you eating locally grown cabbage are very, very good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, no cutting out for you. Oh, okay, well that's good. Um, so chances of you eating a local vegetable are very, is very, very good. Now here's the benefit of eating local vegetables. This is why I love farmer's market so much because it's fresh. It's getting to you much sooner when you buy things that are out of season. So if you're buying, uh, if you're buying something you know, out of season, a fruit or vegetable out of season that they have in the grocery store and it's ridiculously overpriced and they had to ship it to you, it's already lost some of its nutrients. So if you're getting, if you're getting cabbage, you're probably getting it locally, which means that it's going to have even more of the nutrients for you. So pretty cool, right? Um, the other thing about cabbage is, is that once you cut it, you need to eat it. You need to eat it. Once that, once you've actually cut into the cabbage, you need to eat it within like two to three days. Even if it's refrigerated, <laughs> you need to eat it very quickly because the vitamin C, once it's penetrated and once it's been cut, um, you lose vitamin C within hours out of a cabbage. So even if you, 
Uh, yeah, they, they do all kinds of nasty things to shipped produce, for sure, even when it's organic, unfortunately. So I try to eat in season all the time, but that's a whole nother scope as well. Um, but uh, it's good to eat veggies or fruits out of season. Well, you need to eat you need to eat fruits and veggies all the time, but there are certain things that are in season and certain things that are out of season. So, you know, it's just better if you try to eat foods that are actually in season the way that our ancestors did, practically. That's how I think. Well, however they ate, whatever's in season, that's what I do. So like right now, it is corn season. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, corn, yuck, yuck. But it is corn season in Fort Collins, and there is corn everywhere. So if you want corn, you would get organic, non-GMO corn on every street corner. So, yes, you can buy it frozen. If you're going to eat it out of season, you should buy it frozen, actually. So, um, so once you cut a cabbage, you, if you're going to prepare it ahead of time, you actually need to make sure that you're within an hour that you're going to eat it or you've lost some you start losing some of your vitamin C. Did not know that. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, the other thing is, is that they recommend that you cut it with a stainless steel blade and that you never cook it in cast iron or aluminum because it will actually ruin some of the vitamin properties as well. I don't know the scientific reasons. It's just something that I read. Raw. Raw cabbage is always way more nutritious than cooked cabbage by a long shot. And if you cook it, it should only be cooked three to five minutes. So... And I, I say three to four minutes, actually. Never longer than that. So it goes in at the very end of whatever you're doing. So if you want to retain all the nutrients. Um, so the other thing about cabbage that I thought was really interesting is that I read this whole little story about cabbage. And it said that, it, that cabbage has been saving lives for centuries. So here's the reasons. Um, I get, And again, I'm looking at my notes. I'm sorry. In Asia, they made sauerkraut when they were building the Great Wall of China and it actually <laughs> it actually sustained a lot of the workers that's what they ate they tried to find a protein of some kind so probably something that they killed because the most of the Great Wall is in wilderness I've been there actually I've stepped on the Great Wall I have walked on it right outside of Beijing uh, and but Cabbage was, sauerkraut was the one thing that they kept with them all the time because it didn't have to be refrigerated, it didn't have to be cool, and I refrigerate mine because I like it cool, but, um, but they ate it all the time. So it actually saved lives and kept people alive as they were building the Great Wall of China, which I think uh, is amazing. Uh, that is not what's making your fart stink, by the way. <laughs> that is not what's making your fart stink. Your gut is making your fart stink. Because if you have food that is coming out on the other end that is smelly, uh, then that has nothing to do with the food that you've put in. That has something to do with the bacteria in your gut is not good. So just so you know, and pretty much everybody's farts stink at some point. Just I'm not afraid to talk about farts, obviously. Uh, <laughs> my mom calls them poots. Did you poot? That's what she'll say. She's so funny. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I digress. Seriously digress there. <laughs> so anyway, um, when Captain Cook got on his ship, and <laughs> thank you, you guys. I'm being silly today. Um, well, see, there you go. Now you know. Cleaning out the garbage. It's good, I guess, then. Way to go, Evan. Um Christine probably has something to say about that, too, I'm sure. There's probably a whole scope on that. <laughs> Dimple City. Um, anyway, so when Captain Cook... I'm getting way off track. Here we go again. I'm not playing a guitar today, I can tell you that. Um, but when Captain Cook sailed to the Arctic Circle, one of the main staples that they had that was prized on the ship was cabbage. And that's because it could last so long uh, in... in <laughs> Yeah, it stopped the scurvy. Here comes Robin. It stopped the scurvy, and it was a prized possession on these ships when they were doing these long-haul sails to find new worlds. So super, super amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, and then of course, in Europe, in the Middle Ages, cabbage saved lives because it's the only thing that they had to eat. I mean, it was cold winters. You get these really car harsh cold winters. And do a whole scope on farts. You know what? I always say that you cannot talk about health if you're not talking about poop or farts or whatever. You have to talk about those things if you're talking about health. I'm going to leave that to somebody else, but you can do that. I missed the broccoli. Do the broccoli thing again. I missed the whole broccoli po uh, broccoli question there or comment. 
Um, yes, so it's, it's helped many countries, especially Eastern Europe, uh, getting through very harsh winters. It, you know, per, it feeds a nation basically because it is a winter, it is a winter vegetable. So, and then in Roman times, there's still Romans today, but we're talking about, you know, like ancient Rome. Uh, I read today that Cato the Elder actually recommended crushed cabbage, that you take cabbage and that you crush it and that you put it on cancerous ulcers on your body. What? And that it would heal it. <laughs> Can you believe that? I mean, so we're talking about ancient Roman times. They actually have this man's writings saying that if you crush leafy cabbage that and, and put it on, you know, on an ulcerated cancer or something, they're probably talking about a skin cancer or something like that, that it would actually heal it. And it was a recommendation that he made to all doctors and all elders and all barbers um, that they do for their patients that had that. So they even knew then that cabbage had these kinds of healing properties. I mean, I don't recommend that you try that today. If you have skin cancer, don't start crushing cabbage and say, oh, well, go to kitchens. Leslie said I could do that and it would heal my cancer because that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that they knew that it had healing properties a very long time ago. Are broccoli and cabbage normal gassy foods? Is it because of, yeah, so, um, boy, that's a tough question because that would be taken so individually. I mean, my, my knee jerk reaction to that question is that, yes, you have some digestive issues if you're experiencing bloating when you're eating. Um, my other, you know, some people have some sensitivities to foods that are not digestive related. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, so I'd have to take that on an individual basis. We'd have to talk about your whole diet and what you're eating and, you know, and, and how much uh, you're moving around and how much water do you drink. And I mean, so we'd have to explore a whole big realm of things to say, yes, that's what's causing that. But if you're eating anything, again, my knee jerk reaction is you would probably have some digestive issues. So here's a great example of that. My gut was uh, kind of out of whack because I was taking too many supplements. <laughs> I'd gotten my gut way out of whack. I was supplementing like a crazy person. I bought a supplement Bible and just decided that I was going to go, you know, supplement happy. I was going to be the healthiest freaking person on this planet. And I noticed there was foods that I couldn't eat. The main one was avocados. I couldn't eat avocados. Very good point. Yes, uh, the digestion doc, I don't know if she's still here, but the digestion doc can answer these questions for you like like downtown, holy cow, bingo bongo. She's totally got the answer for you because, yeah, so it's the digestion doc. Can you put that up there, Evan? The digestion doc, uh, Christine Kazmar, Dr. Christine, how, whatever you, crazy hair, Kazmar, whatever you want to call her. Uh, oh, there she is. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, so if you're not following two people, if you're not following the digestion doc, and if you're not following some result wellness, you are missing out. Oh, thank you. Good. Yay, I passed the test. Yay. <laughs> uh, so if you're not following these two people, you have to go follow them if you're interested in health <laughs> because, um, because they are going to help you move you along in your journey for sure. So already a patient in the making. See, me too. We're all there. So... <laughs> um, yeah, cause she's amazing. And it's, uh, both of these people, Evan and a uh, Christine, the digestion doc and summer's wellness, they have your best interest at heart. This is not like a big old money grab or anything like that. This is a, I want to see you well. I want to see you healed. Um, I want to see you functioning at your very best. That's the kind of people that these two people are. We're right in sync with one another because I'm the same exact way. So does anybody have any questions? There's a lot of you here today. Some of you I don't know. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Leslie. Uh, my website is gotokitchens.com, and I'm not wrapping up. I'm just telling you who I am. So anybody have any questions? Aw, oh, thank you. You're amazing, and you know it. If you're amazing and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions about cabbage or anything? While you're typing those in, I'm going to tell you that the rest of the week we're going to talk about, thank you, that's my website, Go to, Evan put it up there, go to kitchens.com with an S and the number two. Um, we're going to talk about uh, that you love cabbage. Oh yeah, I do love cabbage for sure. Is there any sweet done with cabbage? <sighs> that is a really great question. Oh my gosh, now I'm going to have to go find your recipe. 
I'm going to answer that for you this week. I'm going to make a note as soon as I'm off the scope, and I'm going to find you a sweet cabbage recipe. I actually think there's a kraut that's kind of sweet. <laughs> you have to be careful with sweet because you want to know how it's flavored. Obviously, you don't want any sugar. Um, you know, uh, coleslaw obviously can be sweet. You love sweets? Do you crave sweets? Are you craving sweets? Or do you just like them? Because I just like them. So, oh, I have a great recipe for stir fry with my cabbage. Um, does she have one? Okay, so can you put her website up, the cabbage sweet one, uh, Whole Health Dana? I'll go look at her website. Um, so I do this really great uh, stir fry that has uh, like bell peppers and carrots. Um, it has um, celery. Um, what else do I put in that? I think that's the only vegetables I put in it, but at the very end, it's like a lo mein. And so at the very end, instead of having, there's the website for the sweet, go look at whole health Dana. If you want a sweet recipe for cabbage, you'll have to go search for it, but it'll be there. And I'll talk about it this week. Maybe we'll get her on a scope or something. Um, but so, but I, instead of using noodles, you just like sweets. Yeah, me too. I just like them. I don't necessarily crave them, but I just like them. So, because if you craved them, then we need to talk about why you're craving them. <laughs> but, um, so, but instead of noodles in my stir fry, because, you know, I love lo mein, like before cancer, I was like a lo mein junkie. Like, hand me the lo mein. I'm going downtown on the lo mein. Um, but I don't eat it very often, like very rarely. I treat myself every once in a while, but very rarely do I eat it because of the noodles in it. Um, but so now I've used, I've ribboned my cabbage, I've taken my cabbage and ribboned it and I put it right, I stir all my vegetables, stir fry all my vegetables and at the very end I put the cabbage in just to, it wilts and it makes like this crunchy noodle kind of effect. It's amazing. You have to try it. It makes an amazing noodle in stir fry. Leave the long ribbons so you, so you can pick them up with your chopsticks and you get like this amazing thing. So, all right, bye. It's good to see you. Anybody else have any questions about cabbage that I can answer for you? Thank you. I love that you love my show, Ellen. It makes me so happy. I am a lefty. <laughs> How'd you know that? <laughs> How'd you know I was a lefty? <laughs> but yes, probably because I talk with that hand. I point with it a lot. So how do you noodle your cabbage? Um, so it's super easy. So you want to cut the cabbage in half and then you want to quarter it. And then you want to go very thinly with a large chef knife. You want to go very thinly just along, uh, just along its edge, just very, very thin slices. And you'll get these like long, you know, they're like this long ribbon. So I did discuss, <laughs> you have to watch the replay. I did discuss the differences. I, that was my very first thing I talked about the red and green um, and the different vitamins that you get in different cabbage varieties. So, sorry, you'll have to watch the replay. I'm not doing it again. You should have been here on time. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys. This is like a giant long scope, 44 minutes. Holy cow. So, um, yeah, it was the first thing I talked about, the types of cabbage. Um, so this week we're talking about all things fermenting. We're talking about why it's good for your gut. Talked about bok choy for sure. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's a holiday. You get to play video games. Um, but we're going to talk about different kinds of cabbage. We're going to talk about fermenting. I'm going to teach you the principles of fermenting. I'm going to cut a cabbage. And at the end of the week, um, <laughs> thank you. You're sweet. I am not. If I talked for another three hours, I'd be like this tomorrow. I'd sound like I smoked. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So at the end of the week, I'm actually going to do this recipe where I grill cabbage. You soak it. You soak wedges in hot and salt water, and then you put them right on the grill, and you close the grill, and it like steams the cabbage within itself. And then I'm going to make a miso um, a miso vinaigrette that goes over the top of it. So you guys have to watch on Friday because it's going to be amazing, or at least catch the replay. You know what? Uh, I am just learning about fermenting myself. Fermenting is fairly new to me, and um, I, it's, it's just been in this last year that I have introduced it into my diet, and it's made a world of difference. I used to take magnesium, which was probably doing you know nothing. It was like a total pl placebo, but I used to take magnesium every single day to help me flow better so that I would poop better. And... <laughs> And it wasn't, it, I mean, it worked, of course, because if you take enough magnesium, you, you can poop like a crazy person. But, um, but I, I started eating probiotic rich foods and, and not even taking a probiotic, I don't even take a probiotic supplement. I just eat probiotic rich foods, which would be like, <coughs> excuse me, uh, kefir, I got to get a drink, hold on, um, kefir, uh, kraut, 
um, and kombucha. Those are all types of, and kimchi. There's all kinds of fermented foods. We'll talk about all of them this week. Um, and so I started, I just eat like a couple of tablespoons of this a day. No problem. I love kombucha. I don't make my own. I'm a little nervous to make my own because you can really mess it up. And so I, I, don't, I don't really have time to explore that right now, but I can see it at some point I will be making my own kombucha because I love it and it's kind of expensive. So, But right now I let the experts stick to the kombucha, but I do make my own kraut. I made this. So, In fact, go to kitchens. Okay, here we go. Here's the commercial. Ready? Don't leave. Don't leave because it's rude to leave right now. Don't leave. This week, I am dropping an episode on gotokitchens.com, and it is an entire tutorial on how to make this kraut right here. I This jar that you're looking at, I made in that tutorial. So it's coming up this week. It's going to be on gotokitchens.com, and it will show you exactly, step by step, how to thank you. How to make um, how to make this? This is actually an El Salvadorian um, recipe, and it's called a curatito, and it is amazing. If you don't like sauerkraut, you will like sauerkraut if you try this. It has like a little bit of a Spanish kind of Mexican flair to it. Amazing! It's so good. Uh, I'm time. Let's do it. I'm there. You, I don't even know how blab works, but anything that you're doing and you want me to do it with you, I'm there. So let's do it. <laughs> How's that for eager beaver? <laughs> so anyway, um, so there you go. All about cabbage today. Now you know the basic principles of cabbage. On the rest of the week, we're going to explore be exploring all types of, um, okay, yeah, great. Uh, we'll be exploring all different types of, of information and ways to prepare cabbage throughout the week. But right now, I have to take my husband tennis shoe shopping. He's very patiently, I don't know where he's at. Hold on. Where is he? I can't see him. Oh, there he is. He's very patiently waiting. <laughs> Everybody say hi to Robin. Hi, Robin. Uh, he's very patiently waiting to go tennis shoe shopping and we have to go to the grocery store and we have to do all kinds of things. I'm wearing my Woodstock t-shirt today because it's casual Monday for me. Um, so there you go. You guys have an amazing Labor Day weekend. I hope that it's full of love and joy and good food. Christine says hi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you want to see Edison? Where is Edison? Oh, hold on. Oh my gosh. Hold on. I got to show you what he's doing. My lovely little dog. Can you see him underneath there? <laughs> He's crashed out. Oh, there he goes. I can't get underneath the table. Okay, so there you go. You've had your Edison fix. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm totally out. You guys have an amazing day. Ooh, sorry. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you the rest of the week. Noon, weekdays. I know he's a good boy. Noon, weekdays, lunch with Leslie. We talk all things health, good recipes, healthy recipes, healthy ways to live, and to implement it into your lifestyle in very easy ways. And so I'm here to help you. I'm not here to make money. I am here to help you. I will make money at some point, but right now it's all about you guys. So thank you so much. I want to share everything I've learned with you. And now I'm going to go buy tennis shoes. See ya. Bye. See you tomorrow, hopefully.